All right, here's the last section of our sim review, questions 38 through 50. The bar graph shows the number of bags of two brands of dog food that were sold at a store. One bar for day five is missing from the graph. So we see here the lighter uh, brand is brand X, the darker one is brand Y, and on day five, we're missing the information for brand Y. And so, um, we continue reading, the number of bags of brand Y food sold on these five days was 175. So 175 of brand Y, which bar represents the data for day five for brand Y. So we know that in total they sold 175. So if they sold a certain amount days one through four, we can just find that sum and subtract that from 175. So uh, the main thing that they're gauging is can we read a bar graph? And so we see here on day one, it's 35. Day two, it is 50 bags. Day three is also 35. And then day four is 20. So I could add those numbers up. So 35 plus 50 plus 35 plus 20 will give me 140. And I know that there was 175 bags total because that's what it tells me right here. So 140 minus or from 175 will tell me how much is missing in this uh, missing bar for brand Y. So five minus zero, seven minus four, and one minus one will give me 35 bags. And so I just have to look and find the answer choice that shows 35 bags. <clears throat> Number 39, Freddy exercised two and a half hours per day. And so we talked about each, meaning typically multiplication or division, and a per day, we could also say that is each day. Exercised two and a half hours each day on four days of last week. He burned 330 calories per hour, so again, each hour, while exercising. How many calories did Freddie burn by exercising last week? So, some amount of hours per day for four days. So, two and a half hours per day for four days. I'm finding the total, so I need to multiply those numbers and 330 calories per hour. So once I know how many calories per hour, then I'm going to multiply again. So two and a half times four, four times five is 20, four times two is eight, plus two is 10. And then again, I just count my decimal places. So that gets me 10 uh, for my calories per hour. And, or hours uh, per day, rather. So that's how many hours total he exercised uh, last week. 330 calories per hour. So we're just going to multiply 330 times 10. And so when I do that, I'm going to get 3,300. And there is my answer. Uh, some things that students might mess up is they might try to go ahead and multiply that, which is fine. You just have to remember to add your decimal place back. Um, other than that, it's just um, standard algorithm and multiplication. Question number 40. A student graphs a point that is represented by the ordered pair 3, 0. In this ordered pair, what does the number 3 indicate? So we know in our ordered pairs, ordered pairs are uh, x, y with my first number being how far I go along my x-axis or my run, my second number y, how far I go along my y-axis or my jump. And so three is going to be my x-axis or my run. <clears throat> so let's take a look at our answer choices. So three, the point is three units above zero. Well, above would indicate jump, and three is run, so would not be above, would not be above again. 
Uh, three units to the right. Okay, that could be running. So, so far, so good. To the right of zero on the y-axis. Well, no. Because, again, my y-axis is the axis that runs up and down. So, and then my x-axis. So, that doesn't really make any sense. Because three units to the right of zero on the y-axis. You don't go y, uh, right on the y-axis. Oh. Y-axis is up and down. So that doesn't work. And then three units to the right of zero on the x-axis, and yes, that is correct. So just by reading through the answer choices carefully, we can eliminate three of them, and that leaves me with the correct answer. 41, the equation can be used to find B, the number of dollars Ms. Colton earned as a sales bonus last week. What was the amount of her bonus? So they're just wanting us to just solve this gemdos uh, equation here. So I'm going to rewrite it so I have a little more room to work. And Gemdos. Do I have any groupings? Yes, I do. 39 times 9. So when I multiply 39 times 9, I get 351. Bring the rest down. And I'm done with the... Uh, Parentheses, so I just have 429 minus 351. I can do that subtraction and get my answer. Number 42, Maricela used this, to, this model to represent one whole. So here, this is no longer 10 like we would do in earlier grades. This is now one whole, meaning that this would be one tenth. Which model represents one and eight tenths? times four. And so I have one and eight tenths four times. So F, I do see my one and eight tenths, and I have four tenths, and it looks like I'm just adding those together, not what they're asking me to do. G, I have one and eight tenths, and then I have four holes, and again, looks like we're just combining those because I have a box around it all. So one and eight tenths plus four, Closer, but not really what they're asking me for. Here I have one and eight tenths, but then it looks like it's split up into four groups, but not even four even groups. So it's not even really modeling this. I'm not really sure what's going on here, but not what we're looking for. Uh, H, I have one, two, three, four groups of one and eight tenths. And while that really... Um, I could read that as four groups of one and eight tenths. I do know that three times four is the same as four times three because multiplication is uh, is a, is commutative, same forward and backward. So those are the same thing, uh, product wise, and so H is going to be my best answer. Number forty three, a square, important to know has a perimeter of 20 centimeters and an area of 25 square centimeters. Use the ruler to measure the line segments below to the nearest centimeter <clears throat> and which line segment could represent a side of the square. Now, as I said in class, this didn't really line up exact because we have a copy of a copy that was printed, then copied, and so... Um, it didn't really line up exactly, but, you know, I told you if you can get close, there's two answer choices that are close and two that are definitely wrong. And so either of the two close ones I would accept. And it might help to draw a picture. And so if we were to draw a picture, I'll see if I can get a pretty good square. Um, yeah, not perfect, but good. And so if I have an area of 25, that means all of the stuff inside is 25. I find area by one side by one side or length times width. So something times something is 25, and that would be 5 times 5. And then let's see here. Would that perimeter still match? So 5 plus 5 is 10 plus another 5 plus another 5. So yes, perimeter would be 20, area is 25. So that means I have a side length of five centimeters. So then I use my centimeter ruler from my MVP and I can eliminate C, it's way too large, D is way too small. And in fact, on our page 
five is somewhere close to here. So A is a little bit uh, short. Uh, B is a little bit long. So either of those two answer choices um, would be correct. And on the actual star, it's going to be very exact um, should you be required to do something like this. Number 44, what is the quotient? So I know that I'm dividing. When 75 hundredths is divided by 5. So it's important to know that I have 75 hundredths divided by 5. <clears throat> so we have to set this up correctly, otherwise we're not going to be able to solve it. And then once we do set it up correctly, we have to remember the rule. When my dividend has a decimal, I throw it on the roof and forget about it. All right, so how many fives are in zero? There are zero fives. How many fives are in seven? There are one. One times five is five. That gives me a difference of two. Bring down my five. How many fives are in 25? Five, and five times five is 25. And so I do have my answer. Number 45, a definition of a financial term is shown in the box, a tax on retail products based on a set percentage of retail cost. All right, so retail, as long as you understand that retail means when you buy something at the store, that's the most important thing. So if you don't know that retail means when you buy something at the store, it's almost impossible to answer this question. But if you do know retail is when you buy something at the store, well, income is money that I make for working at my job. My payroll taxes is the taxes that come out of my paycheck before I get it. Property tax is my tax on my houses or land. Sales tax, tax when I buy something at the store. So then that would be my best answer. Question number 46. The points in the graph represent a numerical pattern. In fact, it's a linear pattern because I could draw a straight line through all of my dots. <clears throat> so, does it go to the origin if I draw the line? It does not. So, if it doesn't go through the origin, then I know that it has an additive pattern. And so, if it has an additive pattern, I can automatically eliminate two answer choices. And then I have two other answer choices that both kind of seem correct. And so, it is an additive pattern because the y-coordinate has a higher value than the corresponding x-coordinate. And what we'll find is that is actually true. So x and y, let's just put four of the dots on here. We don't have to put all of them. Uh, 1, 5, when x is 2, y is 6. When x is 3, y is 7. And when x is 4, y is 8. How did I get from 1 to 5? I added 4. Uh, 2 to 6, so my rule is plus 4. But H said that my Y value is higher than my X value, and in fact, that is true. It's higher every single time. So H is true, but is it the best answer? So J says <clears throat> it's also additive because the X coordinate is increased by 4 to create to the corresponding y coordinate. Well, that's exactly what's happening. So it is increasing by four because I have a rule of plus four. So j is my best answer. Even though h is true, j is, is the better answer. Now, it's also important to know that if I had a multiplicative pattern, x is one, and then my rule was times four, y would be four. If x was two, it would be eight, three, would be 12, 4 would be 16. Y is still larger or a higher value or a greater value than X every single time on my, mul on my multiplicative pattern. So just because the Y is higher than the X, that doesn't automatically mean that it's additive. And so that's why H is wrong. Even though it's true, it's not exclusive. It's not additive because it's higher. It's additive because it's additive, because I'm adding 4. So if it was multiplicative, H would still be true. So that's not a good answer. All right, 47. 
We do need to know some stuff about geometry. We have not covered geometry, so I understand that students got this wrong, and that's okay. We do need to define a few things quadrilateral. If it's a quadrilateral, it has four sides. It's a four-sided polygon. If it's a rhombus, it has four sides, and all four sides are equal. So equal sides. And if it's a polygon, it's closed, it's flat, it has straight sides. So I think some of these definitions we know, <clears throat> and again, we'll review them all uh, when it comes time to do our geometry unit. So I see here circle. Circle is not a quadrilateral, not a rhombus. Ooh, circle is not a polygon. Wrong answer. Next one. Uh, square is a quadrilateral. Square is a rhombus because it has four equal sides. And a uh, square is a polygon, so so far so good. Triangle is not a quadrilateral. Triangle is not a rhombus. Triangle is a polygon. Okay, good. Um, rectangle is a quadrilateral. Rectangle is not a rhombus. Rectangle is a polygon. So this one looks pretty good. Let's look at C. C square is a quadrilateral, square is a rhombus, so there should be uh, a check mark there, so that one's wrong, and oh, all three of these are polygons, so I'm just going to stop there, I can eliminate answer choice C, and D, uh, circle is not a quadrilateral, not a rhombus, not a polygon, so far so good, triangle is not any of those, um, oh, look at this one. One, two, three, four. That is a quadrilateral, so I have an error there. So I've eliminated all my answer choices except for answer choice B. Question 48. Almost there. Students spend or students earned extra points on a science test for correctly answering a bonus question. The relationship between the student's original test score and their final test score, including the extra points, can be represented by this equation. y equals x plus 25, which table could represent the relationship? So if it's x plus 25, my rule, I have an additive rule of plus 25. So I'm looking for plus 25. And so here, uh, I'm going to look to see if I can I eliminate anything. So 70... Uh, if I'm adding 25, I should not be getting a lower number, so that's no good. 70 plus 25, I should not be getting a lower number. Um, I don't see anything else I can eliminate right off the bat, so let's see. Let me go back to F plus 25. Yep, that's true. That's true. That's true, and that's true. So you're doing a lot of adding of 25. Um, yeah, I know. Some of these questions make you do a lot of work for one question. This is one of those, but uh, hey, that's just the nature of star, so we got to get that practice on the sim. Uh, that's true. That's true. So, so far, F looked good, but I'm trying to eliminate H. 83 plus 25. Ooh, no. That's only plus 15. That's not good. 91. Yep, another plus 15. So that one can't be good. So then F is my best answer choice. What is the value of the expression? So just a Gemdos question. Do I have any groupings? Yes, I have uh, groupings. I have parentheses and brackets. So my innermost, inside most grouping is what I do first. 6 plus 3 is 9. Bring the rest down. 45 minus 9, because I still have grouping. So 45 minus 9 gets me 36. Now I'm done with my brackets uh, times 2. And then 36, wait, times 2, times 27. Oh, my goodness. I almost made a big mistake there. Uh, yeah, make sure you copy down the problem correctly, Mr. Ermitz. All right, so 36 times 27. Ooh, I'm going to have to do that one here. Uh, so, yeah, that looks, uh, what, 252 and... 720, add my partial products together. That gets me 972. And there is my answer. All right, last question. Which model represents three-fifths of 15? So a couple of ways to solve this. 
I could take just looking at the language approach and say, well, I need 15 total. So I have 15. Nope, I don't have 15. I do have 15. I do have 15. And I need three fifths, meaning I need to split it into five groups and I need three of those groups. So, oh, nope, I didn't do that here. So that's not good. Uh, that is five groups, but I only have one shaded. I have five groups, I have three shaded. So there's my answer. So that's one way of doing it. Another way is to analyze what's going on in each one. So here on F, I do have 15, but I only have five shaded. That's five fifteenths. That's not what it's saying, or five of 15. That's not what this is saying. Um, G is just three fifths and not three fifths of 15. I'm still missing the second half of what I need to do. H is one fifth of 15 as we described and J is three fifths because I have three of the groups of five shaded. So it is three fifths of 15. The other thing that we could do is we could say three fifths of 15 and then because I, I know of is multiplication, make that into a fraction, and I just multiply across. So 3 times 15 is 45. 5 times 1 is 5. Then I have 45 fifths, or 45 divided by 5, and that gets me 9. So I should have 9 shaded. And so then I look to see which one has 9 shaded, and confirmed, J has 9 shaded. And so that's the final way that I can do this. Hopefully you found these videos helpful. Please ask me in class if you need additional assistance, and I will be happy to help.